And we are now at the Spanish Inquisition for the 2018 bidders for San Jose. And you're on. I'm glad that's not on the recording. We might have licensing issues. Um, I'm Andy Trembley. I am the chair of the San Jose in 2018 bid. Um, if you have been by our uh, fan table, you may have seen some of our little flyers where there's a few bullet points about why San Jose is a great town for a 2018 Worldcon. Uh, we talk about our great facilities. We're very easy to get to. We're, we, we're serviced by many transit options. Uh, the SJ Convention Center has a beautiful new expansion. Um, we've already got a contract with it and with uh, surrounding hotels, including the two hotels that are directly attached to the Convention Center. Uh, our headquarters are the relatively new, as in it was a hole in the ground, the last Worldcon in San Jose, uh, San Jose Marriott. Uh, these are proven fan-friendly facilities. Um, which I'll talk about more in a later bullet point. Um, and on the accessibility question, our facilities host the uh, Bay Area Accessibility Expo. If there was a problem, I think we would have some very, very large complaints and not be hosting them anymore. So moving on from great facilities, we have great summer weather. Uh, our average highs for the week that we've uh, picked are in the uh, mid-80s with an average humidity of pretty nearly zilch. Uh, warm, dry, and at night you can expect a 20 to 30 degree drop in temperature. Uh, so you have lots of options of how to dress, how to get around the downtown. Uh, jumping to our ne my next bullet point, we're actually pretty damn good for food and drink. Um, the SF Bay Area is the cradle of microbrewing. It is the cradle of craft distilling. And Santa Clara County itself is actually a noted wine region surrounded by Santa Cruz County, um, Lodi, a bunch of other wine regions. <laughs> it's California. Uh, but you know, fans can't live by drink alone. Uh, we have a compact, walkable downtown with a lot of variety of restaurants, um, Mexican, Vietnamese, uh, great Indian. Uh, so I'm going to jump onto my last and my favorite bullet point about the Bay Area. Um, we've got a great gang of fans in the Bay Area. The facility that we are bidding hosts a 3,000 person furry convention and does it well. Does it well enough that the convention actually has banners around downtown. We're talking about a furry convention here that most places folks think that these are a bunch of weirdos. Well, in some ways these are my weirdos and I love them. Uh, the facility hosts a very large anime convention um, it is going to be home the first time this winter to uh, GX3, a uh, queer-centered video game convention. And that's just the facility that we're bidding. The Bay Area also has three general science fiction conventions, a bunch of gaming conventions, and a very successful steampunk convention, um, which actually ties into some of the geekier, but not necessarily traditionally fanish things that the Bay Area is known for. People go, so how do you explain steampunk? At home, we explain steampunk as, it's what happens when the great Dickens Christmas Fair met Burning Man. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, we are a cradle of maker culture, uh, the birthplace of, of robot combat, the, uh, the uh, home of the first tech shop. Um, if you want gory details, contact me at my table or at chair at sgn2018.org, and I can actually send you the questionnaire that we did for SMOFCON 32 that really fleshes this out. Time. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. OK, um, questions? Uh, 
Um, yes. Uh, what are we doing to reach out to communities of color? What is the community in the Bay Area like? Um, the uh, Forbes recently listed us as the most diverse of the 100 largest metro areas in North America. Um, we are very majority minority. We have, I can pull up numbers here actually, 35% uh, white, 31% Asian, 28% Hispanic, 3% mixed race, and 2% black. So not the same kind of diversity you got in New Orleans, different kind of diversity. Um, we have, for other conventions that I've worked on in the past, we have had, we have made strong outreach attempts with other fan communities that, let me just be honest, aren't as white as general science fiction conventions. We've done strong outreach with um, anime fandom, which is very young, um, very, very diverse. Uh, I mean, it's, there's probably more uh, black attendance at anime conventions around us than there are in the general population. Uh, so we are doing everything we can to leverage our fan communities and make this a diverse event. So, um, I mean, we're California. If we, we have to try, but if we can't do it, we're doing something wrong. And you're gonna ask the harassment policy question also. Uh, San Francisco Science Fiction Conventions Incorporated, which is our parent corporation, has a umbrella harassment policy our committees, our events, our operating committees are required to have a harassment policy appropriate to the event. Um, we have not yet developed one for our Worldcon, but our standing rules say that we have to, and we will. Um, we have had harassment policies in place for WesterCon 66 that was operated under, uh, under uh, SFSFC, um, which I co-chaired. Uh, and that was developed in conjunction with the woman who ran our operations team to make sure that it was a clear, as clear as possible, meaningful, non-exclusive policy that was not the kind of thing that someone could come in and try to rules lawyer on us. It's the, here's some examples, but we're going to use our own judgment. And when push came to shove, we did. Ah, so we have three international airports, uh, transportation. We have three international airports. The nearest international airport is five miles from the site, um, San Jose International. It really is international. It really does have international flights. It is not just international in name. Uh, Oakland International is a little over 30 miles away. Um, San Francisco International is a little over 30 miles away. Uh, once you've landed in uh, California, we have San Francisco International. There is, a, there is a BART connector, which will get you to Caltrain, so you can take the train down. Um, there, Oakland, it's a little more complicated to get to San Jose via transit. Uh, San Jose, obviously, well, there's a bus bridge to the light rail. Light rail gets you there. Um, and we have a we have a relatively major train station in town that's serviced by Amtrak. So, time. Time. Thank you very much. <laughs>